And I came across boondocking and I'm like, what is boondocking? I looked up the definition, literally Googled it and it popped up. And I remember reading that and thinking, why in the world would anyone want to do that? Myth number one, boondocking is only for RVers who are too cheap to pay for campsites. Now don't get me wrong, we like to save money. <laughs> and we've been known to be cheap at times. But that is not the main reason we boondock. Because this is why we boondock for places like this. We could step out of our RV, walk out here by ourselves, watch the sunrise over the ocean, and listen to the ocean. Listen to that, buddy. Whoa. We get some of the most incredible views that we otherwise never would have. I don't think I would ever have oceanfront property in Baja, like these million dollar homes over here, but it gives us the opportunity to this to be our backyard. Here comes the sun. Here yeah. comes the sun. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Oh, you're excited, aren't you? Are you excited? Come here. I don't think he's gonna eat my camera. You think he's gonna eat the camera? He likes your electric, so he can eat your camera. I don't think you're not gonna eat my camera, are you? Now, over the last almost eight years of living in an RV, we have boondocked not even, hundreds, hundreds of nights in different places all over the country and other countries now. I mean, we boondocked at the base of a glacier in Alaska, a volcano in Hawaii, just outside Arches National Park in Utah. And really, if nothing else, this video for me, for what I wish I knew before I started RVing, because we, we were scared, and I'll let Marissa talk about it later, but we were scared of boondocking. If the fear of boondocking keeps you from boondocking at all. I think you're really missing out on a really epic part of our being. Having that flexibility of knowing, hey, do I want to boondock all the time? Probably not, but could I boondock? Especially for something really epic. Could I boondock if the RV park is full or something goes wrong? And along the theme too of like, um, the only people that boondock are people that are too cheap to pay for campsites. Like, like there are a lot of, some of the most expensive RVs I've seen <laughs> have been out boondocking. These massive tag axle class A's, and this is in Mexico. Uh, I've seen, you know, half million or million or $2 million. We've probably seen $2 million like off-road vehicles down here, uh, boondocking. So there are people who pay a lot of money and have money just for the boondocking experience. But even though we've seen RVs a million plus, I've seen solar and lithium setups. Well, and I've had solar <laughs> over $30,000. You don't have to have 20, 30, $50,000 solar and lithium setup to boondock. That is myth number two. So in our little Viva down here, we have boondocked, I don't know, at least 50% of the two months we've been down here in Mexico. We've been in Mexico over two months already. I replaced the two batteries, which were originals from 2016, need to be replaced anyways, before I came down. I did replace those with lithium batteries. So I've got two lithium batteries in there. And then just to try out something different, I put a 100 amp hour EcoFlow in there, which is not just another 100 amp hours of lithium battery. It also acts as the inverter, the solar controller, because you can plug in solar panels too if I want to. You know, I've got around three grand into this setup. There is a well breaching like crazy out here. Wow. Those things are going wild, aren't they? they are. They're getting their morning workout. But really when you're choosing how much to put in your RV, just start with the batteries probably. Make sure your batteries are good to go. If they are good to go, then I would take that money after that and either put it into a setup where you can use the motorhome to charge the batteries or put, you know, it's not much now. You could do like a little champion for five, 600 bucks for a generator. You don't need tens of thousands of dollars to boondog. Does it help? Does it make it easier? Do you have to think less about things once you put that money into it? Sure, it is nice, but you don't have to have that. That's a myth. Oh, two, two, 
Now the next myth when it comes to boondocking is that uh, it can be dangerous with all the wild animals around. Have the animals been wild and dangerous out here? No, they've been kind and cute. Have the animals been wild and dangerous? Mm -mm. No? Only the husbands. Only the husbands? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, snakes and I don't know, wolves and rabid skunks. There actually is a story about rabid skunks, we'll tell you at some point. So, you know, so I got attacked by a rabid skunk. But anyway, but typically, um, boondocking, very safe. Now we have seen wild animals. Uh, we have seen moose. There are actually stray dogs walking around here. We just saw breaching whales out here, technically at this boondocking spot. So you will see wildlife, but we definitely consider that a pro. And technically, if you're gonna see wildlife, is it barely more dangerous with the wildlife than in an RV park? Sure. Actually, the guy with a skunk was in an RV park, so. <laughs> but, so, you can be attacked by wild animals anywhere. Uh, I don't know that it's like drastically more dangerous as far as the wildlife when you're boondocking. Uh, definitely a myth. No problem for Stuart. Yeah, he was legit pretty worried about getting out of there. Which brings us to another myth, believe it or not. The myth that you have to have four wheel drive, be lifted and have some sort of like super flexible, short, nimble RV to boondock. You don't. <laughs> We've been boondocking in the Viva, which is short, but we have also boondocked all over the country in 40 foot fifth wheels and a 30 foot Airstream being towed by a two wheel drive van. So although it doesn't hurt to be short, it doesn't hurt to have four wheel drive, it doesn't hurt to be lifted. You don't need that to boondock. Just get out there and find a spot and use some common sense. You can, you can scout it with a drone or a bicycle if you have somebody with you with a smaller vehicle or sometimes you gotta detach the truck, maybe check it out. I mean, scout stuff, it looks shady. Or you can use Google Earth and look down with Google Earth ahead of time and look at the area and get a really good idea if you have a large rig, whether the turn radius is good. Uh, you can check reviews on different places. There's lots of ways to just check ahead of time and still have a fantastic boondocking experience. Four wheel drive, not required. It's funny because when we started looking into doing the RV life, we had never even like camped before. I'd never camped. So I started looking up camping and I came across boondocking and I'm like, what is boondocking? I looked up the definition, literally Googled it and it popped up. And I remember reading that and thinking, why in the world would anyone want to do that? Why would you want to camp and have no water, no electric? Like, what does that look like? How do you do that? But now I get it. At the time, I thought, no way I'd ever do that. But I think it just takes maybe doing a night and trying it out and being, you know, prepared. But then over time, we kind of like built our confidence up. And once we saw these amazing places, we're like, oh, that's why you boondock. Self-dressed? What happened here? I get myself dressed. <laughs> Did you pick out all these clothes? Look, Kinsley do that. Did you help him get dressed, Kinsley? <laughs> wow, look at all the accessorizing. <laughs> three layers. <laughs> three layers. <laughs> you guys know we're in Mexico, right? It is a little cool this morning, but <laughs> this is it's awesome. I love it. Now, obviously you can see the pedestals behind me here. <laughs> Which imply we are not actually boondocking right now. So there's this, um, I don't know if I call it misconception or assumption, myth, <laughs> that if you're going to be boondocking, you have to be a real boondocker and you have to like be willing to stay out in the desert for months at a time. And it's almost like the, um, the drive of shame if you come to full hookups instead of boondocking. If that is the case, and I'm gonna first, I'm gonna say that's a myth, but if that is the case, then we have no shame. <laughs> because we, we have no rhyme or reason to how we boondock. We'll go out, we've gone out a couple of weeks at a time, we've gone out one night at a time, like whether it's a harvest host or a boondocking spot, boondocking on some of these beaches has just been beautiful. And we boondocked in Chicago, in, in town, where we could just walk to everything in Chicago that we were trying to visit at the time. We boondocked in friends' driveways. We basically listened to ourselves, what we're feeling, what we need, and then we go back and forth between boondocking and full hookups as needed. For us, boondocking is about getting to places that we couldn't have gotten to 
if we are 100% tied to a pedestal. Now, one myth when it comes to boondocking is the myth that boondockers don't take showers, which is not true. Now, it is harder in this Vivo. It's because... not not true. <laughs> it's not not true. <laughs> but it's not entirely true. <laughs> in our defense, we still take showers, but it's more like literally a jump in, wash off, rinse off, get out. I do a military shower. Marissa, does, I call it a Girl Scout shower. For some reason, <laughs> it stays on a little longer with Marissa. I have things to do in the shower. You don't have to shave. You don't have to do those things. You don't have long hair. It takes me a little bit longer, but yeah, so I take a Girl Scout shower. So this rig is new to us in our larger rigs. Uh, we have like, we have like a hundred gallon water tank in our fifth wheel, which is four times the size of the water tank in this. Uh, and then we also, so it helps to have a large water tank if you haven't bought your RV yet. That's one thing that helps. Uh, number two, what helps? I have not installed it on this one and that's part of why we're having the water issues but oxygenics sell a waterhead that like is better on water flow saving water basically when you use it so this thing like is using a ton of water right now we do have an on off valve on this that definitely helps so that when you're taking a shower you don't have to like refine your hot cold combination you just turn it off and then turn it back on and... can we back up in that cactus you need back up into the cactus mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna try not to back up into that cactus. That's the goal. Did you tell them about our gas station shower? <laughs> I have not. So we tried, we were boondocking on the beach for about a week and we really wanted a long shower. So we saw a place that, it's a, it's like a, a gas station that has a separate building where you can go and pay for showers. So we went and tried to do that one day. And that was interesting. It was nice to, to get clean, but maybe not as hot as was advertised. <laughs> but it worked. I mean, there are on iOverlander and some apps you can see where there are places to, to go take showers. Or that's why people join gyms like Planet Fitness and stuff like that because they can go and take showers. If you're a hardcore boondocker, those are good options. burst into flames. What'd you make, Kinsley? My name! Your name? <laughs> Out of pretzels. <laughs> <laughs> Getting some fuel. Did you figure out how to finally say it? Not really. Yenelo, I think. <laughs> Nathan thought he was saying it the whole time, but I told him, I said, you know you're asking for ice, right? Like, <laughs> they might have ice too. He was, they saying, they he was ice. saying the word for ice. Oh, I did know that from working uh, in the hospital, so. Okay. So another boondocking myth we're busting is there's nowhere to park there where do you find these places to park i think you just have to remain flexible because we we had a spot picked out a boondocking spot we show up and it's full like a ton of big rigs could be a group you just never know when you pull in what you're going to get we had a plan but we also knew that there was a possibility there wouldn't be any room so we had a backup plan so we're gonna go to our next spot and see what that looks like. And then we actually even have a plan C, just looking on, we're using iOverlander. So we kind of got on iOverlander, we looked at our route, and we kind of know there are different beaches all along this Bahia Concepcion that we can park. But you just don't know how full they're gonna be. There's room down on the end. I don't know if Stuart can do that or not. Stuart's so concerned about this incline. Um, Stuart had a drag right there pretty bad. How'd there. it go? It's good. <laughs> he said still dragging. She said it's good. <laughs> I don't know where you go from here. I think this is where is our spot. You can go around that rock too, I think, but I don't know that we're gonna try to do that. Is there any way of him getting down there? No, tell him to wait a minute. Nathan's gonna go scope it out, which I don't know. Can you park right here to the left? I don't know. I mean, I see fifth wheels down there. Yeah, I mean, that has to be that. This has to be the only way they can get in, I would guess. Nathan said, let Stuart see if he thinks he can make that turn or not. It'd be up to him. You have to go around this road to get down here. 
That's why I always recommend to never showing up at a boondocking spot at dark. You just need the extra time and light when you, especially if you've never been anywhere, boondocking is kind of just like a, you don't know what you're gonna encounter. It's interesting. have spirit of a child they're happy doing whatever wherever they go get your own cove marissa i know yeah i've never had a cove before now, as long as we don't point the camera this way to all the graffiti on the wall i don't really know um <laughs> quite the mixture back here yeah this is really tucked in though i don't know if people Again, really i didn't know this was back here i said this multiple videos ago you have to come in to Baja with an open mind because at a glance, sometimes you can be like, I don't know, but oh. then like, look how amazing, where can you do this? Where can you see this? Where can this be your front yard? Well, this is a lot of what boondocking is like too, because it seems like it's either, it's either really good or it's really bad. Yeah. So, <laughs> you can't hopefully. have the good without the bad, but it's like grab bags. Do you remember grab bags as a kid? I never like liked you, the grab bags. I you like, didn't? I like, You'd like ironically, I like knowing what I'm going to get. But which... You pick out like a brown paper bag and you don't know what toys were inside. It's kind of mm. the same. It's, so boondocking is like the adult version of a grab bag. <laughs> organizer. It organizes your... A lot of people believe when you boondock, it's just going to tear your rig to pieces. Now, I'm not going to lie, our rig definitely gets dirtier when we boondock. So more sand, more dirt, more dust. But for the most part, if common sense is there, it's not too much worse. I mean, we, we've came just as close or damaged our rig more trying to get into a gas station or, or some really tight campgrounds. Like on this tree right here. Can't cut it much harder if the truck will hit. You know, today we did have an RV get damaged a little bit and hopefully Stuart will last, laugh about this later. I don't know. He's not too happy about it right now. <laughs> He's, it was, but, that's why we're in here. But that's why we're in this camp. <laughs> so we, we originally were going to go to one down the road, but it was a really steep drop and he's got a Hensley hitch on. So when he tried to make that steep drop, snapped a U-bolt that was holding the Hensley hitch in place. Now he has a, he has a U-bolt and get it fixed. Myth kind of busted on that one maybe so we are spending our last night on the beach and we had to get what we have coined trunk fish so <laughs> one of our favorite things is the vendors will will come around and sell like fresh fish out of the trunk of their car which we were skeptical but honestly it is so good and we make fish tacos every time they come through with this fresh halibut tonight so trunk fish, we're gonna miss this. So I think it's a myth that there's nothing to do in you boondock, but it is true that there's not the same things to do. So if you're used to parking at a resort and having just everything sitting right there, the pool, the hot tub, you can walk to the restaurant, you can drive into town. Like, yeah, that kind of stuff is not there in you boondock, but there's definitely stuff to do. It's just different. We have hiked from some really awesome boondocking spots. Technically we're boondocking in Yosemite National Park, which by the way, if you wanna camp in there, you need to be able to be without amenities. We hiked a half dome. Uh, we've done a lot of hikes just while we're on BLM land or here today though. Like the kids just, this is it. Like this is their playground. We just pretty much had a beach day out here today and we've got this cove pretty much to ourselves. Keep going buddy. Keep going. You're walking the line. There you go. There you go. Good job. I think that's really part of the point of boondocking is to not have the same things to do to force yourself out of that comfort zone like sunrises, sunsets. We did not watch many of those until we started RVing, especially when we boondocked. And really an excuse just to get outdoors, like riding bikes, I mentioned hiking, uh, paddle boarding, swimming, maybe just going for a walk. Like there's, there, there's lots of stuff to do when you're boondocking. And the last myth we're gonna bust, because this is coming to play a lot, especially in Mexico, you start to get some of these remote areas and you do run into some of this, which has to do with this bad boy right here, which is the myth that when you're boondocking, you have no cell, 
No internet, can't work, you can't play, you can't do any of those things. We have cell options that bust that somewhat. Uh, you know, the AT&T hotspot, we have a Verizon hotspot. Um, I think Stuart, they got T-Mobile. But in Baja, not enough. If you need to cover all your bases, this thing has been super valuable in Baja. We, for the most part, have had no issues <laughs> with internet anywhere we've gone in Baja using this. As a matter of fact, I worked all day from inside of here with the internet, getting the video edited for next week, looking up things, downloading things, uploading things, doing all the things. Let's not joke ourselves. We also play when it comes to internet. I came from what you might call a broken home. Literally broken. I was eight days Movie old night. And still living with my parents.